everyone, welcome back to my next video. Today we're going to do something a little different. I have a new friend who is living in her uh, Prius, and yet because of life circumstances, she cannot let the world know who she is and where she is and what's going on in her life. And these things come up, and I've, it won't be the first time I've done this, a video without the person. Um, and basically, it's, the story here is the Prius and how to live in the Prius. And so the first question you would have, anybody in their right mind would have, why in the world would anybody live in a Prius? And, and then you would think, well, how could you possibly live in a Prius? And so those are important questions. And uh, my really good friend, Sue Ann, has been living in a Prius or traveling great distances uh, in a Prius for so long that I've really learned the story and the, the advantages and disadvantages uh, about living in a Prius. So let me answer the why. And there, what's kind of unique about this one is the Habitant. Uh, it's one of the first I've ever seen, I think, with the Prius. And that really is kind of a game changer. So we'll, we'll talk about the Habitant and how it works um, here as we go along. But first, let me tell you why you would consider living in a Prius. Um, the best thing about the Prius is, is it's an enormous incredibly efficient generator on wheels. That's what a Prius is. It, it's got the regular engine that drives it, that creates electricity, that then feeds the, um, the uh, drive battery pack, which drives uh, the vehicle as well. So the engine drives it and the battery pack drives it. And so between the two of them, you're getting, uh, it's completely normal uh, to get 45 to 50 miles to the gallon with a Prius. So that's the first thing, is the incredible gas mileage. Um, the person who owns this drove from uh, Illinois to Quartzsite on $90 in gas. And I don't know how many miles that is. It's got to be 1,000 or 1,500, I would guess. But to jump in the rig and drive 1,000 miles is a not, the cost isn't a big deal not at 50 miles a gallon uh, we were talking about uh, doing an event in how over in Florida a how event in Florida be, with Prius uh, so Ann lives in her Prius and, and I was talking about how much gas that was going to burn I get 16 17 18 in my van and I, she said well with my 50 miles a gallon I don't give it a thought and that's why you choose it but it's charging this incredibly efficient generator uh, in this thing that is the drive engine charges the battery pack, and that gives you free electricity. So, uh, we're it's the winter time now. We're going into the RTR. It's 2020, January 2020. But if it were a hot day, you can leave the air conditioning on this thing. The engine will come on, and that will dry. The air conditioner will draw off the main drive battery pack, which is just an enormous battery pack. And uh, every so often, it will dry, draw the battery pack down, and the engine will come on two, three, four, five minutes, and then it will recharge the battery pack fully and then go off. So imagine having air conditioning at all times. And, and if it does that overnight, it does, it comes on about once an hour. I think Sue Ann has told me, and, I, and if I'm wrong, it's, I'm close on all these details of these facts. I think it costs her a dollar or something in gas to, to run the air conditioner overnight. And it's just not even a factor. She wants the air conditioner on, she turns it off. And that's true of uh, her laptops and her electronics. Uh, she just draws it all from the, the battery pack in here. And so uh, it's free electricity. It's an enormous generator, it's incredibly efficient generator on wheels that gets 40, 50 miles a gallon. Um, and so those are really, really big advantages. Now, you might think that heat would be an, an equally big advantage and yet it's not quite the same the heat comes from the engine that you know like all cars the engine generates heat as it runs and that heat is bled off and blown into the vehicle so it has to run a lot more you can use them for heat but it's not nearly as efficient you would burn quite a lot more gas if you use the prius for heat so that really isn't what you could do is use an electric 12 volt blanket or even maybe even a 110 i'm not sure with an inverter um but with a 12 volt blanket you could certainly do that 
and and it would be pretty efficient and a one of these 12 volt warming pads or, or blankets they work really well to keep you warm so that is an option in heat but they're running it for heat is not all that efficient uh, so those are the big reasons of free electricity for the life of the vehicle 40 to 50 miles per gallon Another reason why I just think you should consider a Prius is uh, the cost of keeping the vehicle running. Not only does it get 40 to 50 miles a gallon, uh, they are incredibly, incredibly reliable. If you go to Google, uh, you could go right now and type in top 10 most reliable vehicles. The, the Prius will be on every single list. They are incredibly reliable and durable. Now, the one thing that I, a lot of you are writing in right now, I can hear you typing, but the battery pack is going to die, and the battery pack is going to die. Um, they originally were saying that they should last about 200,000 miles, and what they're discovering is that it's easily between 200 and 300. Uh, some of the battery packs are going up to 300,000, and that's an awful lot of miles. Um, and now there are clone battery packs, so you don't have to buy an original factory. But if you know, uh, and they're going to be a couple grand, and the, the clones are even are even less, and you can buy rebuilt battery packs. And so those will be less too, you know, a, a Toyota factory, but it will be rebuilt, and, and they'll last uh, really well too. So you got a plan. Uh, if you know you're going to be replacing the battery pack uh, at you know, in 50,000 miles, if you've got 150,000 miles are uh, now, you just got to start saving. you got to put money aside every week, every month, and then be ready to buy the battery pack. It's just a cost of maintenance. Everything else about the vehicle will last better than any other vehicle. And over the life that you will own it, it will be cheaper to operate than any other vehicle ever, probably. The new electric, fully electric cars that are coming out may be cheaper in the long run. We don't know. They haven't proven themselves. This is proven ultra reliable. Um, so those are the big reasons why I think you would consider them. Perfect stealth. You can. Uh, I have my friend Sue Ann, who has taught me everything I know about living in a Prius. Um, I we went to a, a uh, campground once, a place where we we actually paid. I never pay, but I paid at this place. Um, and we parked, and it was a tent site, and you were supposed to walk down um, about 50 feet or 100 feet and set up your tent. Well, she stayed in her Prius and I stayed in my van and people would be walking past her all day. She has super dark windows, uh, all the back ones. Oh, it has to be the back ones. And she has curtains and she lived in her Prius that entire time, except when we were out enjoying the park. Um, and no one even thought about it. They are incredibly stealth. No one thinks anyone's living in a Prius. So their stealth is incredible. You can live in this in any town in America and get away with it and not get a knock unless you do something to draw attention to yourself and then you'll get a knock. So those are really good reasons. And now you think they're just too uncomfortable, but I've known Pri uh, Sue Ann and her Prius for a long time and they're not. Uh, you know, there's no room in there, but let's take a look at this. And a game changer now is the new Habitant. This person has a half a tent. You can't use this in the city. It's too obvious. But if you're outside the city, that's a game changer. That really changes it for me. Let's walk around the Prius, and I'll show you how you can make this perfectly livable and comfortable. And you're not crazy to want to live in. Let's do that. So this is, uh, she's got her bed on this side. She's five foot six. And look how long that is. Uh, even with the door down, it would still be that long. It's plenty of room. Uh, and, this, and this front seat can move forward, be moved forward more, and be tilted down more. Or you could take that front seat out altogether. And if you take out that front seat, then, oh my goodness, it's nine foot from here, from right here, to where your feet would rest, all the way to the very back is nine feet. Feet. It's a very long vehicle, and you'd have to build a platform. If you took this out, you'd have to build a platform to level it off. That would give you all the storage underneath the platform, and then your bed would be the entire length. Now, you wouldn't want the bed up here to be seen. See, she's hung on this black curtain, which divides it, and so that's really nice. At night, in the dark, people aren't going to see in there. Really good stealth, fantastic stealth. Now, this person that owns this vehicle... Has, is a bit of a prepper. She has nine weeks of food. 
So she sleeps here. She can be comfortable in the front seats to lounge. Here's all of her storage. And you can you can get away with this no problem at all. And you can see the habitant really, really makes it nice. Look how big this is back here with the habitant. You can have the bugs kept out. You can have the rain kept out. You can be very comfortable. Now, my assistant Trina is going to show us um, while I'm shooting the video that you can open it up. Say hi, Trina. Hi, everybody. <laughs> you know, you get this great view during the day. You get this great ventilation. And I'll show you inside uh, what it's like to be inside the habitat. One the problem for me with these things is there's no headroom. Um, okay, so I'm inside and I'm lounging. This is where she is set up to lounge. I'm not trying not to break anything while I'm in here. It's got a nice little fan right there. And Trina, will you shut this for me? So you would just set this up for, so that you're comfortable. Yeah, yeah, there's a good idea. I have a lot of room, and I have uh, a lot of ability to see outside. I can look how much room I have. I can t I lift my arm up, and I don't even touch. This solves one of the biggest problems which I see with being in a Prius is going to the bathroom. Now, Sue Ann uh, has figured it out. It's not a problem for her to go to the bathroom in the Prius, but it would be for me. Um, and what uh, my friend who owns this Prius does is, of course, she uses a bucket, and here's her bucket. And she said this is where she uses it. Let me, <laughs> as Cody doesn't like being without me, let me see if I can figure this out. Now, this is where I'd have to be like this if I were, if the door were closed. But with it up, I'm standing, I am fully up. Uh, you can see, uh, if you can see me, I can be on my knees and have uh, room over my head. I real, That's really nice. And let's assume that uh, nature is calling. And, uh, you know, this is not a, uh, <laughs> a pleasant topic, but it's what we talk about. So here's my bathroom. Nature's calling. I can get up on my knees. In fact, I can stand. I can get up and just hunch over like that. And then nature calls, and I can sit. Oh, man, that works so well. I got plenty of room over my head, plenty of room to sit here and, and answer nature's call. <laughs> I know, we talk about pooping, but <laughs> I think we all do it. So... Uh, this works so well. So the big thing is you're going to have to figure out how to move around, what to grab, what to pull. I've not done any of it, so it's awkward for me. But uh, really quickly, you would you would figure out how to do it. So let me show you how. Um, and so here is her bucket. And the bucket, this is where it lives. This is where it stays. And it's set in here so that she can sit on the bucket without having to hunch. You can see um, that you can actually stand in here. And uh, I am standing hunched over slightly, but not bad. I mean, I've been in vans that were this low. So this isn't bad at all. And here's the bucket. And if I were going to use the bucket, i just sit here and answer nature's call. I mean, that's the way you can do it. So... The hardest thing, the habit of, of living in a Prius, is going to the bathroom, and the habitat habitant solves that. I can easily go to the bathroom here. Um, I've got, uh, you know, I got, I've got the windows open, but I'd close them, of course, if I were going to the bathroom. I got a big view, lots of room. I could stand and put my. I could put my pants on. How do you put your pants on in a Prius? The habitant solves that. I could easily stand here and put my pants on. I will lay here. She's using a, um, a self-inflating pad, a backpacker's pad. Well, I sleep on one myself. I'm a big fan of it. And you can inflate them or not. And let me take the camera in. <laughs> and let me warn you, I have a, uh, 
a hole in my sock. Sorry, folks. I got a hole in my sock. Don't, don't I think it's the end of the world. So I'm laying in here, and I have plenty of room. I'm not very tall. I'm only 5'8". But uh, you could make this fit, and this front seat isn't as far forward as it can go. You can see I got plenty of room here around me, plenty of room to back by my feet. Uh, I could even be taller. A taller guy could still be in here with the habitat and be comfortable, really easily comfortable. So the length is not a problem. The scrooching around is a bit of a problem, but you just get used to it and figure it all out. What to grab, what to pull. It does have really nice grab bars. That's what I would do in here, is I would I could pull myself up easily with the grab bars and move around with them. Um, I don't ever do this, so I'm not comfortable doing it, but I would get comfortable and figure it all out, how to move around. So I've spent no time in here, but I think, and, and I'm uh, 65, almost 65, I'm not at all flexible, I've not maintained it. I think I could figure out how to move around in here comfortably. So grab a handlebar, that sort of thing, mostly thing. I can do this, see? And now I can roll myself out. I could, I could just sit down, go back. I'd figure this out. So I think you can see it would be a lot more viable to live in here than it looks. Uh, one of the big issues will be storage. How much room do you have? She has eight gallons of water. And, and nine weeks of food. So there's this big area down here, and you can see a lot of food, you know, just things, toilet paper. We all have to have toilet paper. Uh, so she's got a lot of storage underneath here. Front seat, side, side walls. Uh, you gotta be a minimalist, but you can do it. And you, she'll do her cooking outside. So, you know, she's set up to do her cooking right here. Standard um, butane stove. So really, really easy. I am a, I have become just an enormous fan of Habitants.com. I think this is this is a game changer for the Prius. You get all the wonderful things that we love about the Prius, and you also get so much more headroom and maneuverability inside. You can stand up to change your clothes. Uh, you can get uh, on and off your toilet bucket really easily. I just, uh, you know, doing a sponge bath underneath the habitat would be just fine. I'm, I'm a fan. I just think this is uh, a really good way to go. Lots of room. Uh, close it up. Safe for the mosquitoes. Lots of ventilation. Really good. Really, really good. Okay, so there you have it, folks. I think uh, I think hopefully this will make the Prius a uh, a more viable idea for a lot of you because you just can't beat a Prius. Uh, like I said, they're the most one of the most reliable vehicles you can possibly own, and uh, you can buy them used for fairly cheap. We mentioned the battery pack issue. If you can find one needing a new battery pack, get a really good deal factor in the price of the battery pack, go buy the new battery pack, then man, yeah, these can be just a great, great thing. So there we go. I hope you got something out of this video. If, if nothing else, you, you, you gained a new admiration for people who live in a Prius. And if you did, like us on YouTube, subscribe to the channel, hit that thumbs up button, and we'll talk to you later.